Hello guys, thank you for joining me here today. You see I'm in a new sitting. I'm not on my couch uh, as I usually am. I just had a word from God. Um, not that he was like the Seth or anything. I just had a word from God that um, a lot of people need to move from the churches. Not because the churches are bad necessarily, but because it's becoming so much more easy for when the FBI in America or, or if you're in New Zealand, the GSCCB, whatever it is called, if you're in Australia, whatever your spy agency is called, it's so much easier for them to find the bigger and bigger churches. And if it's on TV and they know exactly where it is, I can see a lot of tourist, terrorist attack, attacks happening inside your con congregation. And that is going to turn you away from God. It's going to make you ask him why he done it. And I believe he's telling people in their hearts that they need to move. And then you move to more rural areas and go to smaller churches. This is not going to act as an underground church where we just believe what we believe and everybody else can believe what they believe. No, we still go out to the streets. We still preach how we preach. We don't be scared of going out to the church, uh, out to the streets and preaching to the uh, heathen, to preaching to the sinner, to preaching to the, uh, to the people who are possessed by demons. We don't stop doing that. But what it does is it hides your church and, and Give your church safety for when you want to go back to your church and to uh, have that safety protection there. And I believe people are being told to disperse a little bit uh, out to little rural areas where churches aren't registered as companies because they're not companies, but where the pastor spends uh, most of his days inside the church praying just complete and utter day and night, we are in the weekends, the pastor will be there, he will sleep there, there are pastors who actually sleep at church during the weekend, because they want to um, see the holiness of God manifest, they say no one come in until Sunday, I'm going to sanctify the church, there's prayer, it's just me, I'm the pastor, on a Sunday, come in. Monday, come in. Tuesday, come in. Wednesday, come in. Thursday, come in. But Friday and Saturday, do not come in. I want to stay here, sanctify the church, and make sure everything is right in my heart of God, number one, so I can preach a message from God. So I'm not preaching a message from the devil. And there are actual Christian pastors who don't even know they're preaching uh, devil doctrines. I have um, had a, uh, I'd say probably a naive kid, um, 16, 17 maybe, on YouTube. Um, in fact, I got involved in the conversation because he was saying a certain uh, YouTuber uh, was was lying and he was um, giving false doctrines and all that kind of stuff. So I, I said, no, he's not. And the reason I said, no, he's not, is because, number one, it wasn't a false doctrine. It was complete no doctrine. Number two is I stand up for... The person who is um, giving the right message, and and the certain person, um, not going to name names, his name, uh, <laughs> he's American, but he, he's a pastor of a church, um, and he puts out videos usually weekly of his um, church service, uh, not his worship, just his actual message, and um, so people can actually just tap into what um, he's teaching, and so people will hear his message and they'll, they'll comment obviously. There was this one comment, a guy commented, he said that uh, this certain pastor was teaching a false doctrine, he was talking about prophecy by the way, um, that how prophecy can be changed into a false doctrine unless you're forcing it to be changed into a false, a false doctrine. And obviously this guy wasn't. And so I talked to him and I said, look, this guy is obviously not, uh, and he called this guy a scoffer, um, and I said, obviously this guy's not a scoffer. He is teaching complete other doctrine from God. And I haven't seen one uh, part of any message that I would say I disagree with. I completely, 100% agree with everything he talks about. And I don't usually agree with parts of what they say. Um, that's probably just my um, side of I want to be right. I want to be right. My stubbornness. But this guy, I agree with everything he says. and. It doesn't matter whether I believed what he said beforehand or not. I still, afterwards, uh, because he explains it in explicit detail, I still, uh, I, I absolutely 
Basically, every time I go away from it, I agree with what he says. And so I defended him. He was defending himself, but I wanted to defend him, and I wanted to get my point across. And so this guy starts messaging me back and saying, you're heathen, and he was actually ridiculing me. So anytime someone starts ridiculing you in your message, then you're, in most cases, right. He was calling me a scoffer. He said I'm an idiot. He said I'm a buffoon. He said another guy's a buffoon. And when they, when people would do that, they have no arguments. Number one, to be able to come back at you, um, and and say to you um, anything logical, anything uh, factual. Um, I he he had said um, the certain uh, pastor was talking about Daniel and his prophecies and how it's not always the end times, although God does. Um, say there are certain prophecies, uh, there are obviously certain prophecies of the end times, and this guy was saying, no, all the Daniels are about the end times, but I would disagree with that, so I, I contended him on that, and um, so he, like I said, he called me a buffoon and everything like that, and uh, I haven't heard back since the last message um, I put up, and I said, I don't like saying, because I really hate saying that people are delusional, and I said, but you are completely delusional, your doctrine is completely false, because you're saying how uh, America and, and Britain were the two witnesses. I was like, no, no, no. The two witnesses are two witnesses of the Bible, Elijah and probably Enoch, maybe Moses. But um, anyway, I was teaching about this, um, him about this, sorry. Um, and I was teaching him about this because it is completely 100% factual it is either Enoch or Moses, who is with Elijah, as the two witnesses. Elijah is definitely one of the witnesses, and, and Enoch or Moses is um, either one. And to be quite frank, I don't care which one it is. I personally prefer that it's um, Enoch for the fact he didn't actually die. But, I mean, uh, again, I don't care whether it's Moses or not. Um, I just want it to hurry up and happen, really, um, so we can be in heaven. and. Until that day comes, however, I'm going to preach the word of God. And here's the thing I, I, I um, think every day. Lord, if you come back today, I would be absolutely astonished. I'd love to go with you to heaven today. But if you don't, because I don't know the will of God, I don't know um, when he's coming back. But if he says, you don't know the time or the seasons. Um, and so I don't know exactly the time. I don't know exactly the seasons. I don't know exactly that. There is no way I can even know that. So I say, if you come back today, I'm happy to go with you. I want to go with you. I want to be with you right now. But if you don't, show me someone who I can help come to Christ. Um, and I think that's what I've done with him. So I helped him come to Christ because his whole doctrine was completely faulty. And I asked him, uh, what does he believe about um, about salvation? And, um, I can't remember if he replied or not, but the last reply I had, um, was you're a uh, you're you you're delusional, um, and I he said that I'm a buffoon, and I said you're delusional. Uh, you need to go back and revise your scriptures and everything like that, and make sure that your doctrine lines up with God. And he hasn't emailed back uh, or messaged me back, and that is because I didn't have to use. I'm going way off on a rubber trail here, but anyway, <laughs> back to the point. Um, I, I thought it was an interesting conversation we had. So, I go back to the point. You, if God's telling you in your heart you need to go to a rural, rural area and go to a small church, that is not bad. Do what God says, okay? There are going to be people, and, and this is a prophecy, okay? There are going to be certain people who are Christians, who just look at themselves as normal Christians, and they're told to go to places like Iraq, Iran, uh, Syria, uh, where all this ISIS stuff is happening. That's not necessarily where I'm going, but that is where people are going to be called to. There's, other, there's going to be other people who aren't necessarily going to get pros. Uh, um, I got to get. Um, <laughs> I can't get persecuted. Uh, they're not going to get persecuted there as such, but they're probably going to be called names. Probably like I'm probably where I'm going to have to go. Um, I'm going to probably have to be um, very vigilant and. Um, and pray that I, I just reserve my anger because I'm going to get so many, um, ridic I'm going to be ridiculed so much. My reputation is going to be completely shared. 
um, and I'm not going to have a good reputation anywhere I go because of the Word of God. Paul did. Tell me where Paul had a good reputation. I mean, he murdered uh, Christians just when he uh, before he even started his ministry. Tell me how that gives him a good reputation. You're going to have certain things that come up that were you either you might have been Christian when you done them, um, but you weren't. You're, you're Christian, but you weren't for the love of God. You didn't want the love of God necessarily, or you didn't have that love of God, and so you've done things that were stupid. I've done things that were stupid, even when I had the love of God, and they could come up, you know. You do stuff all the time that people are ridiculing you on. You've just got to persevere. Look at someone like uh, Jim Baker, and he's not a false prophet, by the way, but look at someone like Jim Baker, who preached the word of God, who says, you were saved through faith. Alone, and not by works, but any man may boast. And um, you look at someone like Perry Stone, who says exactly the same things. In fact, there is something that, and it's not that if someone cannot, even people who watch us, you will not be able to say Jesus is risen. He is alive today. You won't be able to say that. Something will come out of your mouth. That is a little bit contrary to that. And it may just be a little bit twisted so it's just enough believable that you said that he is risen. He is alive today. He is alive among us. Uh, he might be in a different dimension as us, but he's he's with us right now. And he's with everybody. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at once um, while being still a human form. Um, because this is a glorified body. If they can't admit that he was... Uh, it, number one, it says in John 1, uh, 1 John chapter, now let me get this right, chapter maybe 2, 4, 3, 4, <laughs> I hope I got that right, <coughs> I know the verse is 4, so go through all the chapters of um, of, of First John's, and it goes on to say, it goes, for anyone who cannot, uh, anyone who confesses the, the, the Lord, Jesus is um, is come in flesh, is of God. Anyone who cannot confess that Jesus Christ, or who anyone who does not confess that Jesus Christ is come is come, is come sorry is come in flesh, they are not of God. So and this is saying that he is alive today, well. He is just so you don't know and so you don't believe that I'm trying to twist it. He is come of flesh. Come in flesh, sorry. He is come in flesh. He is around today in flesh. And he can show you the scars of the scars of uh well it would be about here actually probably. The scars of the nails, the scar of the spear on his side. He can show the scars in his feet, the brood is on his back, on his all over his body, and he can show the scars on his back of when they flogged him um, with probably like naily kind of things. He can show you them. He showed he he showed um, Thomas. Thomas was unbelieving, and he came to Thomas and, and said, "You know, touch the uh, holes in my hands or my wrist, and touch. Uh, put your hand in my side." When he put the hand aside as well, what I believe, and I believe along with Perry Stone, he, he taught me this part of it, that Thomas probably actually touched the heart of Jesus, in turn touching the heart of God. It's, it, I mean, and when you think about it, straight up he goes, my Lord, my God. My Lord, my God. Instantly. My Lord, my God, why do you think he didn't say it when he touched the wrist? Why do you think he didn't just look at it? He literally touched the heart of God is what I believe. So thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time. But until then, stay safe, guys. And as always, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Amen.